Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And as you know, this is the DADM 2 course under the NPDNL MOOC series, and we are in the third work week. And this is the 14th lecture, that means with two lectures, 14th and 15th, we will wrap up uh, the third week. And as you know, this course is for 12 weeks, which is 60 hours. Each week, we have half an hour, um, uh, such five lectures. And after each um, week, we have an assignment. Till the 13th lecture, we discussed about the concepts of utility and how you can consider uh, utility for different things. I will come to the decision trees later on, but first I would like to start off with the concepts of uh, data and development analysis as a concept, then come back to solving problems accordingly. Now, so this is a PDF file, so I will scroll down, so please bear with me. Um, so, consider you have a system. So, system is basically any uh, unit which takes some input and basically gives some output. And consider those units are called the decision making units. Exam can be hospitals. So, yeah, Apollo hospitals, if they are at different parts of the country. So, in Bomb Mumbai, in Kolkata, in New Delhi, in Chennai, in Bengaluru. So, if you have different um, uh, units of Apollo. So, they will be considered as decision making units or DMUs as, men, as mentioned in the first line. Or it can be say for example, the state government of different states, Maharashtra, then it can be Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Odisha. So, we will basically consider that as some decision making units. It can be in school also. Or it can be the IITs also all like Kanpur, Delhi, Bom Mumbai, Bombay then IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur or it can be the IIMs also. So, you have some decision making units and what are the inputs. So, say for example, for the hospital the inputs can be nurses, can be paramedic staff, can be doctors, can be number of beds, can be different type of, of services which are given, OPDs, it can be either related to uh, gynae, it can be related to uh, some cardiac related treatment whatever. And the output can be say for example, the occupancy rate of the beds. So, lower the occupancy rate better because people are being, uh, they are recovering and then going out of this nursing home. So, how rate the people move out from the system? It can be the number of successful operations, it can be number of success, successful cases, critical cases handled. Uh, it can be say for example, also be the number of very um, sophisticated operations which are being done and in the case of say for example, the IITs and IIMs, the inputs can be students, can be teachers, can be staff, can be the library, can be the infrastructure, computer, classrooms, labs and the output will, can be quality of students who are working in different types of sector of the, of the country. It can be how well they are placed later on, what is this average salary packet, how many are going for higher studies, how many are going for research, how many are joining government services, how many are starting their own businesses uh, or it can be how the, the IITs and IIMs are able to help the people from the lower strata of the society get education. So, it can be different things. Say for example, for the government, it can inputs can be government servants, can, input can be say for example, taxes. Output can be say for example, the, the uh, quality improvement of sewage system, quality water, then traffic problems are, e uh, are eased out, crime and, and law and order are minimized. So, they can be different uh, outputs. Whenever you are considering this in, in DMUs, the inputs and outputs need not be in quantitative terms, need not be in, in, in terms where you can basically quantify in rupees, in dollars, in yens. Say for example, I want uh, the number of students to graduate from the university. So, it will be only numbers or inputs can be say for example, the library. 
or output can be the salary, um, a median salary, average salary. So, if for the salary we have some values for the library, it may not be quantifiable, it may be more qualitative. So, with this let me read it. Consider you have a system or also called a decision making unit, which takes some un inputs, a bundle of inputs, processes them, whatever the process is. So, for example, if it is a CNC machine, it is taking the raw material, it is taking the cutting fluid, it is taking the electricity, it is utilizing the man hours of the, of the worker who is working on that. So, they can be different things and output can be different type of uh, HP motors which are being produced can be the, the, the scrap material which is to be sold in the market. So, they can be different type of outputs. So, can, let me continue reading it, uh, it processes them and produces some outputs. So, we will denote inputs by IPs and outputs by OPs. Example of such systems or DMUs can be as I mentioned as machinery, a factory, a hospital, an airport and university. Invari invariably there may be many such similar systems like if I am talking for the example for the IITs or the universities can be all the IITs. So, they are each single DMUs. If you are considering the government or each state is a DM, if you are considering the airport example, it can be would, would be the different type of airports which you have in India. So, invariably, invariably there will be many such similar systems of DMUs which takes as inputs, which is the same types of inputs in different quantum in some of and, uh, and gives the outputs in different quantum. It may be possible that in some of the machineries which you are utilizing to produce say for example, different HPO motors some of the DMUs may not produce those DMUs. So, obviously, we will uh, uh, produce those type of motors, we will consider them to be 0 in that case, but we will consider bundle of in inputs and bundle of outputs as the output and inputs as IPs. So, invariably there may be many such similar systems of DMUs which take as inputs and the same types or sets of inputs IPs in different quantum process them and produce the outputs also in different quantums in different numbers. So, in such a situation we are required to find that what is the rate of processing of these inputs and outputs or what is the efficiency of the DMU. So, what is the efficiency would be considered relatively that means, how good or bad is DMU 1 with respect to DMU 2 or how good or bad is DMU i with respect to DMU j. So, we will basically compare the efficiencies of the DMUs and say that where the improvements can be done. So, in such cases we are required to find what is the rate of processing of these inputs and outputs or what is the efficiency of the system. I am just repeating the statement. So, that we can compare them against themselves that is the DMUs and compare against themselves and find out to what degree they are deficient when compared with the ideal system or in what respect they are efficient when cons considered with, with different other DMUs which are there. So, obviously, there would be two ways of comparing what would be the way of when you are trying to compare the absolute scale and the one of the relative scale. Say for example, I will give an example which may not make immediate sense. Say for example, you are um, ok, let us let me consider we are doing the, uh, the marking of DADM2. So, obviously, many students obtain different marks. So, they we can cons consider or generally what is followed is there can be two marking scheme, one is the relative marking scheme, one is the absolute marking scheme or active scale, relative scale. In the relative scale, the highest marks is say for example, pegged up to 100 and then basically the grading found out and based on 80 would be in. So, say for example, 80 is made 100, so proportionally the person who gets 70, his mark is, is made, his or her marks is, is basically pegged up to that relative scale. Similarly, a 40 mark student, his or her marks would be pegged up to the, the relative scale when where 80 has been made 100. So, this is the relative scale. Now, obviously, the relative ranking would be given. In the other case, and obviously, the grading would, would different depend because you have already decided on the brackets of the grades depending on the marks. Now, when you come to the absolute scale, so we will consider the absolutely marks whatever it given it, it is as it is. So, if the person has got 80, it will be considered 80 out of 100 and we will basically peg the marks of the grades of the other students accordingly to a absolute scale. So, to first explain that, let us explain the problem in a more systematic manner and let us assume the following. Number 1, m is the input numbers. So, they would be 1, 2, 3, 4 till capital M capital N, N is Nagpur, say for example, is the number of outputs. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 capital N. 
you have k number of DMUs, so 1, 2, 3, 4 till capital K. So, what I am basically highlighting are these. So, this is basically an user. So, this is m is the number of inputs. So, you will basically have the inputs as going from 1 i is equal to 1 till capital M. J would basically be the output. So, it would be going from 1 to capital J and k would basically be the uh, number of DMUs, it will go from 1 to capital K. So, M J ok sorry my, my mistake. So, this would be so this would be till N. So, capital N M capital N and capital K need not be equal obviously, M and N need not be equal also. So, we will denote x suffix i k as the the ith input variable for the kth DMU. So, we basically have the DMUs 1 to capital K. So, for each one they would be the inputs. So, we will consider i number of inputs are there, i can be any number. So, you will basically have x 1 1 x 1 2, x 1 3, x 1 4, so on and so forth, where the first number will denote what is the number of the input and the next number um, uh, that is 1 1 or 1 2, that 1 2 3 4, which is the second number would depend, denote what is the DMU size. So, basically x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3 would basically denote the first input for all the corresponding DMUs 1 2 3 4 5 6 so on and so forth. So, you can basically do it in the other way also by in, uh, doing the nomenclature as x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3, where the first number basically may denote the DMU also. Similarly, you will basically have y j k, where it will denote the jth output corresponding to the kth DMU. So, again similarly, y 1 1, y 1 2, y 1 3, y 1 4 will denote as per this nomenclature, the first output with respect to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth and so on and so forth DMUs or if you follow the policy where the, the first uh, subscript denotes the DMU, then basically you will denote it as y 1 1, y 1 2, y 1 3, y 1 4, so on and so forth, where the first number 1 would denote the DMU and the next number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 would basically denote the output and obviously the outputs and in, in inputs and the DMUs would be denoted by, by the maximum number n, m and k. We will also denote u i k's and v j k's as the resp as the ith input for the k the DMU and the jth output uh, weight, these are the weights. So, u and v's are the weights. So, v is v j k is the out, um, jth output weight for the kth DMU. Again, you will basically have u 1 1, u 1 2, u 1 3, so on and so forth, where the first number will denote the in, uh, input number and the second number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as per this nomenclature denotes the DMU. It can also be reversed in the sense you can consider x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3, so on and so forth, where the first number 1 denotes the DMU and the second number 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth denotes the um, input. So, obviously, uh, you can basically make the differentiation accordingly. Similarly, when you have v 1 1, v 1 2, so on and so forth, as per this nomenclature, the first number denotes the output number and the second number 1, 2, 3, 4 denotes the DMU. You can also reverse it where the first number would denote the DMU and the second number would denote the output. Now, let us consider and uh, let us highlight here. So, let us consider three different concepts of production and scales of returns. So, that will give us the picture why we are trying to do the formula, formalization of, of the uh, optimization problems accordingly. We will come to the solution later on. So, let us also consider three different concepts of production and returns which are number one increasing return to scale IRTS, decreasing return to scale DRTS, constant return to scale CRTS. And we will see that how these three returns to concept would, would in turn change the basic formulation of the optimization problem 
even though the final methodology based on which we will try to solve the problem, the simple, sim simple optimization problem concept would remain the same for all the three cases. Added to that, what we said is basically this increasing, decreasing and constant return to scale. We will have three different type of models, one is the output oriented model, one is the input oriented model and one is the radial model, we will consider the combinations of the output and the input coming into the picture. So, output would have some implications, input would have some implications. So, the output word means some implication with respect to the output, input means some implication with respect to the input and radial measure would basically a combination of them. So, let us consider this graph. So, so this is the decreasing returns to scale, so which is which is uh, highlighted here is, is me ok. I think I should use the, so this is the decreasing return to scale let me decreasing return to scale. So, this is the decreasing return to scale which I have just, just highlighted. Now, let us look at the graph. So, first note down the y axis and the x axis. So, on the y axis you have the output and the x axis you have the input and the, the graph which gives you the combination of the output and the input is which I will again highlight now using say for example, the uh, light pink color. Let me use uh, another color, let me continue using the yellow one. So, it will be easy because yellow one is not here. So, the graph is this one, this one which he highlighted. Now, notice one thing, notice the black one DME 1 which is mentioned as inefficient because the set of all the DMEs which are combination. So, why I am saying that? Okay, let us consider. Consider arbitrarily which I will erase, but uh, consider arbitrarily a point is here, a point is somewhere here and there is a DMU. Now, if you consider the input, the input is here, the output is here. Now, if I am looking at the bundle of input and output, what I would basically think? There can be two ways. One is at the same level of, uh, of input or output, I will basically try to minimize or maximize is in this way. Consider there are other sets of DMUs which are scattered. So, let me use th uh, this as the set of points. So, I am using a, so these are the set of points which are there. All the points which are there are DMUs. I am just taking an example, I will erase this later on. So, consider the point which has is here which is just vertically up. It means at the same level of input the, the DMU can get an higher output which is here. I would I just ha very lightly mark it because I want to re erase it later. So, rather than this point, I would rather go to this point where my output would be more. Consider other way around. I want to basically keep the seven level. So, here I keep the input fixed, increase the output. Now, on the other hand, consider the output is fixed, but the input is very high. So, what I will do, I will try to go. So, in this case, sorry, in this case, I will try to go up. And in the later case, when I go, when it is horizontal, I will go more on to the left such that at the same level of output, I will try to basically utilize less and less input. So, that means, I am always trying to move up vertically up and on to the left horizontal. So, if you consider this, so now I can erase this uh, set which is there, which I have drawn. So, if you consider the point which is, which is the black one this is the inefficient which means it can go vertically up which means we are following the blue line and it touches this point which I have not drawn and this is marked as DMU efficient output bracket output what I am going to come to that. So, this is in blue color and or else I can go on to the left horizontally which is the pink line such that I reach the DMU 
one which is efficient but with respect to IP. So, IP is the input and OP is the output. So, what it actually means is this. So, actually it means that this DME 1 which is inefficient can be made efficient with respect to the input also or with respect to the output also. Another way it this inefficient can be made efficient is to move in such a way diagonally such that it reaches that curve which was there. So, the curve why it is, is, is decreasing in the sense this decreasing return to scales concept is basically it means that as you keep increasing the input, the output increases, but the rate of change of the output starts decreasing. That means, the first derivative is, is definitely, if you remember the utility concept, the first derivative is positive, but the rate of change of the second derivative is basically less than 0. That means, for unit, each unit addition of the input, you are getting a little bit less and less amount of output correspondingly. So, if you move, so the, if the curve is there when I am hovering my the pointer and if I move diagonally and such that I move the least distance diagonally such that I am tangent to the point where I reach which is basically here which is marked by I O P E and I P E which I am just marking with the, uh, my pointer. So, that point would basically be the point where both the input decreases and it may also mean that the output can also be increased. So, that I am trying to basically make a compromise where the input decreases in some proportion, output also decreases in some proportion, but the overall efficiency is the highest as that in some cases it may be true that I have to decrease the in input, but at the same time I have to increase the output or decrease the output proportionally in order to maintain the maximum efficiency. Now, let me consider very simply hypothetical examples. Consider the vertical movement up. You have employed 10 workers and 3 machines. Now, it is it so happens that these workers you cannot be fired because they are permanent workers, but on the on one hand and you have already you have purchased 3 machines very sophisticated machines each being costing say for example, 20 lakhs. So, in that case what on an average price and in that case it will mean that you will basically have to increase the production in order to increase the efficiency because you cannot decrease your input. Because decreasing input means what? You have to basically lay off one of the workers which obviously mean a huge amount of litigation cost or you may basically not try to increase the production, but tell them to sit idle. But if they sit idle obviously as they being um, permanent workers you have to pay the salaries, the medical bill, the insurances the provident fund, electricity cost which you, you are incurring and so on and so forth. On the other hand, so obviously, the a rational decision has to be taken whether you will go vertical up. Consider the case where you want to basically move um, horizontal left and in this case consider that you are taking temporary workers that means, you can hire and fire them as per the norm. So, if you have taken temporary workers say for example, on one day you need 20, so you will hire 20, keep them for one month say for example, suddenly see the production is falling down and you want to maintain the same amount of, of several output you may basically give each um, person who is working a little bit more, but basically reduce the number of workers we are coming so as that or you we are employing. So, out of the 20 number of temporary workers you may be in a position to say for example, tell 7 of them that they need not come for the coming days and you will basically pay the salary to the 13 one and, uh, and do the work. So, obviously, it can be done accordingly. Now, the right choice which you do for the decreasing uh, for the decreasing return to scale when you have uh, the this choice to make. So, the best one would be that either you can go up or you can go on to the left horizontally or you can go diagonally. So, diagonal means that you are trying to compromise on, on both the cons concepts of the efficiency side. So, the nomenclature is what you can do is that output oriented is, is given as I mentioned as the blue color, input as the pink color and the radial one as the green color. So, remember the distance of the DMU inefficient which is the green uh, the red black one which I am just uh, trying to hover not mark till the 
radial one which is the green uh, diagonal point. So, this distance would basically be the minimum which would is the shortest distance which you are going to consider. Now, consider the decreasing return to scale, but the, the axes are, are inverted in the sense you basically consider the input one along the y axis and the output one along the x axis. So, obviously, in that case the graph would be as input decrease. So, in that case input orient and in this decreasing return to scale the case was that as you increase more and more on the input the commensurate increase in the output is not happening. So, if you keep increasing the inputs then outputs then the curve would just be the mirror image uh, inverse one with respect to the case where you had the outputs along the y axis and the inputs along the x, um, x axis. So, in this case again that set of DMUs would be on the upper side of the curve you can either move vertically down or you can move horizontally onto the right. So, they are basically being shown vertically down meaning the pink one same thing. So, uh, it is uh, you move down such that you are decreasing your input, but trying to maintain the output and then other case you would basically move on to the right that means you are maintaining the same amount of input, but trying to increase the output and the radial case you will try to move the least distance uh, uh, radially such that your tangent to the curve in order that you are able to decrease input and always make a compromise on the output also. Also, So, this increase and decrease would depend on the type of problem you are doing such that you are trying to increase your efficiency. Again the nomenclature is, is the same thing in the green line is basically radial one, the pink one is basically is input oriented where you only concentrate on the input, the blue one is basically which you only concentrate on the output that is why it is known as the output oriented and the again the same nomenclature of the distance from DME which is inefficient till the tangent point is the least one which is straight line. Now, consider the increasing return to scale. So, in the increasing return to scale you will consider the graphs again in the same way. In first case you will consider the output along the y axis and the input along the x axis. The graphs are such that as you keep increasing the input the output would increase, but in a higher proportion such that the rate of change of the functional form the output input is positive, but the second derivative would be higher that means per unit as you keep increasing the addition of the output is happening at a faster rate. So, all the set of in, in DMUs if you consider the inefficient one if you go vertically up which is the which becomes this is the pink line there you basically maintain the same amount of input, but increase the output. If you go horizontally left there you basically maintain the same amount of output, but decrease the input and the radial case you basically try to increase the output and decrease the input in such proportion that you get the best combination. Again the same type of examples which I gave would be applicable. And here the, the green line which is the radial one would be such that it is a tangent which is a straight line, the nomenclature is again the same the, and for the output oriented model it is the blue one, the input oriented model is the pink one and the green one is the radial one. And if you see the distance the right choice would be the pink one because you want to basically do the case where the increasing return to scale is there. So, because increasing return to scale means that as you keep increasing the input the output also increases, but in a higher proportion. In the other case when it is decreasing return to scale it will be if you keep increasing the input it is not in it is going to increase, but it is going to increase at the lower scale. So, in the next class I will discuss the, the increasing return to scale, but with the, the uh, axis is inverted in the sense the input comes into the y axis and the y um, output comes into the x axis. With this I will end the 14th lecture and continue the discussion of DE in more details at least the discussion and then come to the formulation once we complete few simple optimization problem. Have a nice day and thank you very much.